today is the official release date for Starfield. The early access is over and everybody's able to jump in and play it on Xbox, on PC. Also going to be accessible via Xbox Cloud Gaming. So you can literally play this game on your phone if you want. It's a huge value added to the Xbox Game Pass service. I mean, any big first party game coming from Xbox is just a huge release for the service and, and adds that value where other subscription services don't have it. And one of the questions that was answered during the early access period of this game was how popular was it in terms of people playing it on Steam, reaching the first day or so 250,000 people on Steam who had paid the $100 price take for the premium version to get that early access. Now, the number has definitely surpassed that on Steam, as we can see here from Play Tracker, that they have actually surpassed 1 million plus players on Steam via the premium edition. The question was, where was this with the Xbox version? How many people actually upgraded to the premium version to be able to play it early? And it looks like as well, on Xbox, 1 million plus players. So this is an absolutely insane start, insane release for Starfield in terms of people jumping in. It isn't surprising. This is going to be one of the best selling games of the year. One of the best selling games for a decent long time. Probably one of the best launches they've ever had because of the hype and the popularity of Bethesda, a brand new IP, a brand new RPG. And on top of that, it's well worth it. The game is phenomenal. If you are playing through it right now, I'm always thinking about wanting to jump back into the universe whenever I have time in between doing everything else I have to do. Just went on a really cool mission where I got some legendary spacesuit and helmet that allows me to actually go invisible so I can do some stealth when I'm in my crouching mode and a really cool ship as well with that. So all of that type of stuff, it just gives you this awesome feeling when you're exploring and just discovering things that you didn't expect to discover when you're just organically going through the different areas, but it's an amazing game. And, and this information we do have here from play tracker, and this is their tweet. It says based on our user sampling data so far, play tracker estimates Starfield has far surpassed the 1 million player milestone on both steam and Xbox with just the premium edition buyers and sampling data comes in slowly with a delay. So full launch is today as you're watching this video and they'll be watching the fireworks. So, Million plus players already. Just think about what's going to happen now with this full launch. It'll be very interesting to see if Xbox does release numbers at all. They usually don't, but if they do release numbers specifically for how this has affected the Xbox Game Pass subscriber numbers and how much they have gone up, because they haven't really given us an update on subscribers since I believe the 25 million plus number. We I'm sure it's way past that now, but they haven't given an update officially on how many subscribers there are. So I feel like this is going to have a huge effect. And, and just the fact that people can play it on cloud gaming on any streaming device that they have, I think people will definitely be checking it out there as well. And it'll run and, and look great too, because the 30 frames per second, I feel like is a non-issue at all. I've been playing on the Xbox Series X and on the Xbox Series S and it just, it feels good. It, it's, it is 30 frames per second. It would be great at some point if it gets 60 frames per second, but you're not going to sit there playing it at 30 frames per second, thinking that it is a bad experience. So great launch for Starfield. And we'll continue to see how the game grows and expands as we go forward. Now, Starfield is doing some miracles as well. It's not just a, a game. Apparently Starfield saved this man's life. He is attributing his life and his family's life being saved due to the fact that he was pulling an all-nighter, a late-night gaming session on August 31st while playing Starfield. This is Redditor uh, Tidy C Killa. I guess that's how you say the name. I'm not sure. And it says here, Starfield saved me and my family's life. Specifically saying, I have waited for this game since the trademark rumors of 2015 to 2016. In anticipation, I pre-ordered the premium edition waiting to play this game on the night of August 31st. I decided to stay up and play as long as possible to experience this new universe. And at 2.26 in the morning while playing the game, I heard an explosion from the downstairs neighbor's apartment. Writes, I paused my game to see what was happening. When I opened the door, I saw flames rising up our stairwell to our apartment. I immediately got my wife and cat rushing us to safety with only minor burns. If I hadn't been up binging Starfield, I would have been asleep and we would have all died to smoke inhalation. I want to thank this game for saving my life and me for a horrible fate or from a horrible fate. So 
There you go. Starfield is also saving people's lives, pulling off miracles. Unfortunately, the report from this local news was that they say that one person was killed in this fire, which is extremely unfortunate. But hey, maybe if he was sleeping, he wouldn't have been up and it could have been a victim to this as well. So Starfield out there doing the impossible. And then there is this. This is really cool. One of the coolest things I think I've seen in a while in a video game. And it is the object permanence of things that you find within this world and how they can all be stacked up and actually have these really cool physics if they get overflowing. So this says here, Starfield player shoves 20,000 potatoes into their ship just for fun to see how it works. And this is super cool. If you take a look at this video. He's picking up a potato. He's going to put it in here. Which I believe it's the cockpit or just a room on the ship. And look at the reaction of these potatoes, how they fall out like super realistically and then closes the door and how it all just moves out. So this is awesome to see this type of stuff put into the game. The amount of detail in Starfield is what blows me away on every little object that you pick up, you zoom in on it, you look at it. It really is true when they were showing that off in the Xbox and Bethesda showcase stuff. It's all there. The detail is huge. I mean, when you're running around the world, everything like things are interacting and it's just it's such high detail and this is just another example i know for some people this may just be a funny little joke thing but i think this is super cool to see this and people are probably going to start trying to shove in other objects into these rooms to kind of see how it reacts when the door opens and all that stuff so cool little thing there when it comes to starfield now moving on from starfield there's actually some other big pieces of news here we'll go on here there is an announcement here from ea sports they are releasing the WRC racing game will be coming November 3rd and it will be cross platform multiplayer. Always like to see that with these styles of games, cross platform multiplayer, but here is the official announcement for it. It says built in unreal engine. The game will be available on PC and current gen platforms only. It'll feature 18 official FIA world rally championship locations. There are also 10 current WRC and WRC two and junior WRC vehicles and 68 of the most iconic rally cars spanning 60 years of the sport. So if you're into rally car racing, this is some a game to definitely be looking out for. It says taking feedback from drivers, including former FIA junior WRC title contender and 2023 FIA European rally championship ERC3 champion and game designer, John Armstrong. Players can choose a professional driver setup mirroring the experience drivers encounter every race week. And here is the official announcement, the official reveal trailer of the game to come. So this is coming out in November. It definitely looks cool. And one of the things we do know is EA did purchase Codemasters. And Codemasters were the design, the developers behind the Dirt series, which is a great racing series if you've never tried it. The one that released on the Xbox Series X launch was awesome. And they're coming out here and creating WRC, which I think will be a very good racing game. So you have Forza Motorsport coming out in October, and then you're going to have this coming out in November. It's a great time for racing fans at the end of 2023. And, and this adds just another jam-packed couple of months as we're going in here to end off the year. So super excited to see that. Now, a game that was released a while ago, Star Wars Jedi Survivor a game I still want to play. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but it was one of my most anticipated games pre-launch until they did launch it with all of the issues that we were hearing about, the technical issues. So I've been waiting, and now I think is probably a good time to jump in. I mean, I probably still won't for a while because I'll be playing Starfield so much, but if you were waiting for this game to get to a state where you it's time to jump in and play, this can be it as this is five months after the release. And there's a huge patch here. One of the most important patches here, if you are on console, specifically on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, is the stable 60 frames per second that is coming for this game. There were a ton of stuttering issues and, and performance issues when it first launched. But it says this, performance mode has been completely reworked to substantially improve player experience. A number of GPU and CPU optimizations along with disabling ray tracing has resulted in a better player experience, including a solid 60 frames per second in performance mode and quality mode has also received optimizations to help reduce FPS fluctuations and introduce other visual improvements. And the variable refresh rate support has been added to the PS5. So if you're on PS5, that's good for them. And a bunch of other stuff like... Uh, DLSS support and improvements for additional performance and optimization. So this is great. Five months later, if you've already played through this game, 
in the state that it was and you probably feel a little bit burnt or maybe you had a great experience i'm not sure but now i think is a time once this does drop and people are really playing through it a lot and testing out this new patch to see if it is time to jump in and play this game this is when i will be keeping my radar looking for a sale and then eventually picking up to play it and we'll end off here with two big xbox announcements first of all the upcoming games for xbox game pass have been announced and the small list but a phenomenal list and a so much value in this first september announcement for xbox game pass obviously starfield the biggest one here if you didn't get the premium edition you get the premium add on now you're gonna be able to go in and jump in and play it on xbox game pass on cloud console and on pc you have solar ash here which is a pretty interesting game i did check it out it's like a fast paced they say high speed and, and gravity bending world that you're playing in it's like a drifter game you're going across the environments and it looks like it's a pretty fun action game to jump into i will i think eventually check this one out it is coming on september 14th for cloud console and pc and then finally the other huge day one release is lies of p coming on september 19th on cloud console and pc this is going to be a really good case to kind of look at and see how it's affected lies of p is a big game this year People love these soul styles of games. They've already put out a demo for this game. I've played through it. It is a fun game. I love the atmosphere and what they're going for. But I wonder how this is going to be affected on the service with the likes of Starfield being released right in front of it. If people are still going to be playing this day one, or is this a game that people are going to be jumping into after they have finished Starfield? Because it's one that you're going to have to definitely dedicate some time and effort to play through because it will get tough and all those Souls-like games can, can take a, a long time and a lot of learning in order to progress through it so here it is though this is still an incredible value I think a huge first party game of starfield a game that's already been out previously and then a massive third party day one release and if this is the type of stuff that we're going to be getting every couple of months every three to four months where you have the stuff in the middle that is still fun you still have games like sea of stars that was on the other announcement for game pass and those styles of indie games as well as some other third party stuff thrown in there and then every three to four months you have that huge announcement with a first party xbox game and maybe another third party game game pass value is just through the roof right now and it will continue to grow and now there is also the september update for the xbox platform and this is a great update with lots of stuff here that people are going to want to use first of all the biggest one of all you're now able to stream your games from your Xbox to your Discord friends. Discord integration in Xbox is, is great. And I hope they continue to add to it and, and add more features and pretty much make it the same as it is on uh, the Discord on PC. You can now talk to your friends on Discord if they're playing on PC via your Xbox console. And at, now at the same time within your Discord chat, if you're playing a game on Xbox, you can actually stream that game to your friends on your Discord. They say here, We've heard that you want a more Discord feature. Starting this week, you can stream gameplay directly from your Xbox to your Discord friends with a simple click on stream your game. And they give a little example here of exactly how it works. It's super simple. Nothing that you're going to be looking for and not being able to do it right there, the stream your game button. And then you can click the resolution 720p. And if you have Discord Nitro, it has that option there. It's at 1080p. It also, also has the frame rate at 30 frames per second or the 60 frames per second option if you have discord nitro so super cool to see and this is how it actually looks on the pc with your friends in discord great feature to be added to the xbox the next one here they're updating vrr for the xbox series x and s consoles and now you're going to be able to choose kind of when it is on is it, are you keeping it off are you keeping it always on or are you having it on only when you're gaming? It says here that VRR allows your TV to monitor to dynamically adjust its refresh rate based on the frame rate of the content you're viewing to give you a smooth artifact-free experience while you game. However, if you're using your Xbox Series X and S for entertainment experiences, you may not always want VRR enabled. So starting this week, you're going to be able to select that and select when VRR is going to be running on your Xbox. Now, we also have an update here to rewards and new places to view and redeem rewards rewards on xbox i've gotten tons of free stuff from that free months of game pass it's a great feature and you can activate them on your phone you can activate them when you log on to your console all that stuff and it just helps you get free stuff and it makes it really worthwhile to log into your console on a frequent basis but they've updated kind of where you're going to be able to view your rewards now with the new rewards tab so you can see here you hit the xbox button 
and you scroll down past your profile and your account stuff and your subscriptions, you will have a button there that shows you exactly how many reward points you have. And then you click on it and it will bring you to the rewards page to see all of your, all of your quests. So just easier to track that. Then there's this update here asking your, your, to join your friends gaming sessions, which is a feature that is a lot bigger than people think because people go on Xbox and they're online and a lot of people just start joining up with them. And maybe they don't feel like talking to people that day or playing games with somebody and it can get annoying at some point. And there are other people who don't care, but this feature here will kind of get rid of that. If again, of course, people use it and it's a button that you can ask to join their game and then they will get these requests. It says request to join and for who it's coming from. And then you can either send a game invite, you can invite them to party or view a message. Next up, we have a feature here for voice reporting. We heard about this. We'll see how this plays out. I hope this isn't something that gets overblown and people are reporting everybody left and right. And I hope there's actually humans that are listening to the voice reports that do go through. So people aren't getting banned for no reason. We're kind of seeing that happen right now with the new eight step strike system that Xbox has implemented, which I think they really have to look at and get under control because I'm not surprised that it's happening. People are getting banned for literally doing nothing or for people just mass reporting them because they don't like them, even though they haven't done anything wrong. I am not surprised it's happening. That's always what happens when you try to, I guess, censor people and the stuff that they are saying and people always abuse those systems. I get the point of it. It can be good. It can help people from not being harassed, but it always gets abused. And Xbox has said that humans actually look at all of these reports. I'm having trouble actually believing that from some of the stuff that I have been seeing so far in terms of people getting banned. But here's another one with the voice reporting. They did announce that there will be active voice reporting. You could actually record things people are saying on the mic and then send it in to report them to Xbox and they'll take a look at it and everything. And that is actually active now. So be careful what you say out there on the mics. There's a new wish list notification in the Microsoft store. You can go ahead and click that. And then this one, this is actually a great feature, small feature, but great feature. You can actually pair new accessories to your Xbox console, your headsets, your controllers without getting up and pushing the pair button on the console. You could do it directly from the UI, the dashboard itself. So that's the update. Lots of stuff here, lots of nice little things and some bigger things here and Xbox is continuing to improve the dashboard and the overall Xbox experience. But I will end the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.